Welcome back to our live training session. We're going to be taking a look in this training module at how to dial in our idle control using our FuelTech engine management. Now, we've built the base file in the last two training modules, so we should have a good starting point to begin our training module here and getting the engine actually crank, fire, and run. We're going to be focusing on dialing in our idle control, in this case, the idle spark timing feedback. We're also going to be taking a look at dialing in our fuel at idle conditions and making sure that the engine can crank, fire, and run repeatedly so that we're able to move on from the process of starting and idling to actually driving and doing part throttle tuning and wide open throttle tuning in the next few tutorials. So this is always the in-between. We built our base file. We actually want to get our engine to fire up and run. This is going to be that process here we're going to go through in this training module. Now everything we've covered in terms of the input and output configuration setup should be valid except one thing I want to talk about that we toggled on and turned on in the previous base map creation tutorials that I actually want to clarify how to go in and change a setting uh, because it just wasn't populating in this software version. I don't know if there's a glitch. I might have caught something just coincidentally as I was setting things up. Let's talk about and review what I changed and then we'll talk about uh, how to proceed then in the, the other things we need to go and take a look at here in the training module. So in order to look at what we want to talk about here, uh, what I changed, we're going to move down here under, let's go down into our sensors and calibration area, and let's move to outputs. Now in here, we find that we have our blue output number seven. I actually want to change this to a main relay, a timed main relay. Now, before I set it to an RPM activated output, and that's typically what I've always set and configured it to. It looks like in the newer versions of the software, I haven't looked at FuelTech in a few months, they have this timed main relay option, which actually will control main relay, which is what I was trying to do here with this blue output number seven. So this is something that I turned off. We can see it set here right to none. If I jump down in here, let's move down into our options here. They're going to have the option for a timed main relay. Let's click OK here. And we want to make sure we're going to save this to our file. Let's go ahead and save that to our base map file. And then we want to make sure if we toggle up here into map options that we also have that toggled on right here, time to main relay. So I have that turned on here. I actually toggled on before I started the film. And then I want to actually turn my output for that specific timed main relay control. So we see that's going to be on here. If I go ahead and write that to the ECU, what we'll find is if I turn the power off and turn the power back on again, it'll turn the main relay on, which will then power up the engine harness and the associated things controlled from that main relay. So with the factory wiring here, the main relay control is something that we do need to have. So before the time to main relay, I have not seen it in the software, at least that I recall. The RPM activated output was what I usually use. I set the RPM activated output at zero RPM. And in that case, when we went that route, it populated here. If we go down into our other function section, there should have been an area here called RPM output, and it wasn't there. It wasn't populating in the software, which is why I was starting to poke through the software, and then I saw that I was able to do the time main relay. So here, if we click on the time main relay option, we'll find that we want the mode to be always enabled for the main relay control, and I'm activating the output at zero volt or low side output. So the blue wire, is set to the main relay, and now everything should function properly here. Let me just go ahead and test this real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and power down the vehicle, and everything here should power down. If I give it a second, and power it back up again, everything should function. So it looks like that is going to function uh, and do what I was anticipating it was going to do. And um, so the output is, is working correctly now for that main relay control. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's talk about a few additional things. Let's go here to fuel table and let's talk about what we're going to be dealing with here in the training module when we get the engine to fire off. So we're going to be focusing on dealing with our idle area here. That's going to be between, let's say, 0 to 1%. Remember, we're dealing in an alpha end strategy, so this is throttle position based rather than map pressure based with individual throttle bodies. We've talked about extensively why I switch it to alpha end based, the advantages for tuning an alpha end with individual throttle bodies. It's just really consistency and repeatability with our fueling. So we can see here between, let's say, roughly 0 to 1,500 from 0 to 1%, that's going to be where I'm going to focus on making my updates and changes. Now, one thing to note about this area here, the values are pretty similar to each other, and that's what I want to have that's going to allow it, if I have any kind of throttle, slight throttle TPS movement here, it's going to be sourcing through the areas here in the, in the cell points. It interpolates and averages. We want that to be relatively consistent, so these values should all be pretty even to each other 
even from all the way as low as zero RPM. That just ensures that our fueling is more consistent. Now, we need to possibly turn the values down or possibly turn the values up. The values that we're starting off with here, and notice that I'm using the moat, the table as a percentage of VE. This is not a true volumetric efficiency based system. It's actually injection time based or pulse width based, but we're able to convert the pulse width to an estimated percentage of volumetric efficiency. If you're used to working with VE based tuning, which I am, this is what we'd expect to have here at idle about values of 40 to 50% VE for typical engine. So that's what we find here we're gonna start off with. This should be fairly close. Things that could throw this off if we need to lower the values way down or raise them way up, the injector dead time might be a potential problem. We'll have to unpack that as we go. If we go and take a look here and we jump, let's go down in here to battery voltage compensation primary. This is for the primary set of injectors. We're gonna find that we directly enter the injector dead time in. We borrowed it from Honda to K-Pro software that populated the RDX 410cc injector, injector dead time or latency values. We populated those into our table here and then we zeroed out under our setup here. Let's go down, let's just refresh our memory here under fuel injection. We see our primary injector dead time. We set this to zero so that normally the way this works, it works off this value and then it either adds or subtracts against our table values here and in order to make this a little bit easier to deal with and more familiar, if you're doing any kind of standalone tuning, whether standalones, you'll be more used to entering in your injector latency or dead time right into a table like this. So by bypassing and setting that to zero, we can directly enter in the injector data here. It's the same net sum or the same outcome because it takes that other previous singular value and then we use the values here to add or subtract against it. If we zero that out, we enter the values directly in here. We can control the injector dead time directly and makes a lot more sense. So we might need to adjust our values in here. I don't know. We'll have to see when the engine actually fires up and it runs. Um, but we might have a balance between possibly adjusting those dead times and possibly adjusting our values in here. So we'll have to see when the engine fires off. What we're gonna do is pay attention to what our wideband reading is showing us. We can find that down here. We're gonna pay attention to what the O2 correction is showing us. Once the engine gets up to a certain operating temperature, the wideband, will be compared against the desired target coming from our O2 target table. We've set the O2 target here. If we look down here under our target table, we've set that to approximately 14.5 air fuel. This is what we wanna run or like to run at idle conditions. So we're gonna shoot for this specific target. It's gonna compare the actual wideband reading against the target here, and then it's gonna make a percentage of adjustment to whatever the injector pulse width is being sent to the injectors. Essentially, it's gonna to try to control the fueling for us in this closed loop manner. So we have the closed loop armed. It'll tell us if we need to raise or, or lower our values at idle by a certain percent. And then we can edit these values here again, or alternatively edit the injector data, which really affects idle and part throttle. And again, we're just gonna have to see how this goes depending on how, how far things are off by. Um, a couple additional things, let's talk about our idle control because that's another thing we're gonna have to focus on here in this training module. If we go to our idle speed control, we can see that we have a timing feedback set. There's a, a floor, which is negative five, the lowest it can go to. Then there's a maximum here of 25 degrees. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.